Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veteran Anatomy channel. In this video, we will open the thorax of the dog from the right side and dissect the lung and talk about the structures which we can see in the right view. So let's get started. So, here we move to the right side where we also cut the muscles connecting the forelimb to the trunk and to the neck and to the back here and remove it completely as you can see here. So we remove the forelimb. After that, in the same way, we kept also the first rib and the last two, three ribs and you know, cut all the ribs in the way that we can look into the thorax cavity here. I would like just to mention that we have to cut oblique here because this is the insertion or the connection between the diaphragm and the ribs. So we tried not to open the abdomen. That means this is here the location so of the diaphragm Behind it, of course, we have the organs of the abdomen and we tried not to open the abdomen. So there is no space here at all. So this is here exactly where the diaphragm inserts to the internal surface of the ribs. So we removed the ribs, as you can see here. Again, the ribs are covered here with the uh, costal pleura, which is part of the parietal pleura. We don't need to repeat it here between the ribs if you look exactly behind each rib you know if we put it here so behind each rib we have a small depression inside the rib where we can find one artery one vein uh, here we are talking about the intercostal arteries and veins um, yes uh, this is also very important because we didn't mention it before let me just tell you before we go and talk about the lung that there is a small, actually it's not small, there is a muscle extends between the cartilaginous you know, parts of these ribs up to the cartilaginous parts of the ribs on the other side. This muscle called the transverse thoracic muscle, transverse thoracic muscle, musculus tran um, uh, transversus thoracis, okay? This muscle, if the if this muscle contracts, the ribs of each side, this side will go toward the ribs of the other side. That means the volume inside the thorax cavity will decrease. And that's why uh, the, this muscle is one of the expiratory muscles, which we can find, don't forget, inside the thorax cavity. Not outside, but inside the thorax cavity that transfers a thoracic muscle, this one here. So let's put it to the side here. We open the thorax cavity. Uh, in the right aspect here, we can see the right lung, of course. Again, the lung has a cranial extremity, caudal extremity, or you can name it apex or um, and the diaphragmatic surface or extremity here. We have the dorsal border, we have the ventral border, and the costal surface, the outside surface, and the visceral surface, that one toward the heart and other uh, arteries and other structures, or toward the mediastinum. Okay, in general, the right lung is divided into four lobes four why the left one if you remember it has just two lobes here four lobes the first one is from here toward the head this is the cranial lobe of the right uh, lung here this one is the caudal lobe of the right lung and we have one in the middle called the middle lobe of the right lung. So how many lobes did we mention here? One, two, three. The cranial, the middle, and the caudal lobe of the 
right lung. So we say that there are four. Where, are, where is the last one? The last one called the accessory loop of the right lung and it's located a little bit deeper there. I will try to show you the accessory loop located more to the medial side there and partially so this is the accessory loop of the right lung this loop is partially located inside what's called the mediastinal recess the medial mediastinal recess so uh, this part of the accessory loop is covered with this membrane with this membrane yeah so the accessory loop again is located more medially belongs to the right lung and partially located inside the mediastinal recess. So I, I, I would like to explain how the mediastinal recess is um, formed and that's somehow because of this structure which we can see here which is the caudal vena cava. The caudal vena cava it's located somehow in the middle of the thorax more to the right side you know it comes from the abdomen um, here we have the uh, the foramen of the caudal vena cava through the diaphragm and finally it should go to the uh, right atrium from the left side we saw how the mediastinum goes or the membrane on the mediastinum goes directly to the diaphragm here, part of the mediastinum follows the caudal vena cava and inserts more, not straight in the middle of the diaphragm, but more on the right side, as you can see here. So this is also part of it. So it moves more to the right side and finally inserts to the diaphragm. And in this case, the left mediastinum or membrane there with the right moving toward the right side, they form together here a space called the mediastinal uh, recess, where, as we said, uh, the accessory or part of the accessory lobe of the right lung is located inside it, inside it. So let's put everything together. Again, the right lung has four lobes, the cranial lobe of the right lung, the middle lobe, the caudal and finally the accessory there i will try now i will try to in the same way to cut the connection between the right lung to the mediastinum there i mean again the principal uh, bronchus uh, the um, um, pulmonary artery the pulmonary veins and again i promised you to show you the ligament the left pulmonary ligament and here i will show you that this is here i hope it's clear i will put my finger just under it here this is here the the right the right pulmonary ligament as you can see here um, extends between the uh, the caudal lobe of the right lung to the mediastinum Ah, it just ruptured. Okay, this was the right pulmonary ligament. So, I will cut this connection, try to remove the right lung completely from the thorax cavity, and after that, I will come back to you. Now, as it comes, you know, I cut all connection between the lung and uh, the uh, mediastinum there and now we can remove all three lobes of the lung including the cranial the middle the caudal i keep you know the accessory inside inside to show you exactly the location of the accessory loop here in this case i will t just mention that the accessory loop is somehow fixed to the mediastinum at that level here i will remove the connection here and try to take the accessory lobe from its place let's just try to do it let's 
so it's still fixed here to the heart just try to cut it here and now and slowly we can remove the accessory loop from its position here just like this so let's say this part of the accessory loop was now inside the mediastinal resus so this is here again the mediastinal resus where i put my finger here it's empty now because we removed of course the accessory uh, lobe of the right lung so this part was inside i just forget to tell you that even on the right side you know the area between the cranial lobe and the middle lobe they form together this area called also the cardiac notch the cardiac notch this is the cardiac notch of the right side so if we remove the right lung um, and before I dissect in details all of these structures, let me just uh, go and tell you what we can see here. Of course, here we can see the heart located inside this sac. This is the pericardium again. This is the pericardium. It's covered again, just to refresh your mind, it's covered here with the pericardial uh, bloera, which is part of the visceral bloera. Uh, the pericardium itself uh, has the fibrous pericardium is what we are looking at from inside we have the serous pericardium uh, okay this is the pericardium or pericardial sac here we can see these two very big veins they are extremely important the first one here is the caudal vena cava which moves or collect blood from the hind, uh, from the caudal part of the body, including the hind limbs and the abdominal organs. And finally goes or runs to the right atrium, which we can see on the my finger here. The other big vein collect blood from the head, from the neck, from the forelimbs, and finally goes to the right atrium also is the cranial vena cava. So, caudal vena cava, cranial vena cava, they meet each other and move toward the right atrium of the heart. Here in this area, we can see also some other veins. This one here is the costocervical vein this one here which moves parallel to this artery this is the internal thoracic artery and that's why the vein has also the same name the internal thoracic vein they move and uh, uh, you know toward the cranial vena cava before going to the right atrium here we can see this very good this vein here this vein here this is the atsigos vein this is the atsigos vein uh, let me mention here that the atsigos vein is responsible to collect blood from the caudal dorsal area of the abdomen this area and from the thorax area here if you look exactly you will find how the intercostal veins moves all together and goes to the Atsikos vein, which finally um, goes directly somehow to the cranial, uh, to the cranial vena cava, and finally to the right atrium. In the dog, there is just one atsikos vein, which is the right one. In the dog, there is just one which we can see. So on the left side, we couldn't see this vein there. Good. Here, of course. On the pericardium, if you look exactly, you will find this nerve, this nerve, which if you follow it, you, it will go and innervate uh, this muscle, which is the diaphragm. So that means this is the right phrenic nerve. 
If we dissect here at the base of the heart, we will see the right vagus nerve, which I can see even here in this area. This is the ventral branch of it. And uh, as we are here, let me just tell you that this big structure, which uh, we can see in the dorsal area of the thorax cavity here, is the civigus. And from this side also, we can see part of the, of the aorta. This is the aorta. So the civigus moves below the aorta somehow, finally penetrates the diaphragm into the uh, stomach, into the stomach. So this is what we can see in this view. I will dissect this area completely by removing the pericardium and the connective tissue here. And finally, finally, um, we will meet to, uh, again. See you later.